Good morning, students. So in the last class, we have seen the broad diagram of an embedded system, and which are the different parts that will be present in an embedded system. Also, we have seen which different types of processors can be used as a system core for controlling the embedded system. Okay, and also we have seen what are the different types of memories available for storing the data as well as for storing the program in an embedded system. We have seen this. Okay, so today let us study. What are the different types of sensors that can be connected to the embedded system, and what are the different types of actuators that can be connected to the embedded system? So remember, sensors are nothing but the input devices that are going to give the input to the this your embedded system. Based on that, the embedded system will process those inputs, and it is going to generate some outputs. Those outputs will be given to the actuators. Okay. So let us study about sensors and actuators. so basically a sensor is nothing but a transducer okay it converts energy from one form of energy to another form of energy <clears throat> for example whenever i press a push button okay so the voltage will be sent as an input to the our processor so it is going to sense whether the button has been pressed or not so like this the sensors are going to measure some physical variable in the external world and the signal will be provided to the embedded system for processing similarly after processing the embedded system will generate some outputs okay and those outputs should be given to some of the output devices for controlling some external physical variable so we need actuators for example it may be a stepper motor or sometimes i want to display some output on seven segment display so such kind of devices they are called as actuators okay so <coughs> which are the different sensors and actuators available in embedded system okay so the different sensors and actuators that may be used in in an embedded system or you can use an led okay seven segment display auto couplers stepper motors relays piezo piezo buzzers push buttons keyboards and programmable peripheral interface okay so it is a, the list shown here it consists of both sensors as well as actuators okay so let us study one all these sensors and actuators one by one so the first device is your led already we know what is an led it is a light emitting diode okay so th <coughs> this can be used as an indicator or simply an output device sometimes whenever we want to build embedded systems okay so i want to indicate some value to the user for example when the button has been pressed i want to tell the user that the button has been pressed or whenever the system is turned on i want to indicate that the system is powered on by giving a red light whenever the battery is charging i want to indicate that battery is charging so like this for giving some visual indication to the user we can use this leds light emitting diodes so these leds are similar to your normal di diodes but in normal diodes <coughs> whenever i forward pass the diode the diode starts conducting but it will not emit any light but whereas these leds light emitting diodes they are made up of special semiconductor materials so whenever i forward bias this led it is going to emit the visible light okay so you can see here different types of leds that are used here in an example okay so here there is a green led so there is a blue led similarly different kind of leds are available in the market you can use them according to your needs in an embedded system okay it is an led is an indicating device indicator so next type of indicating device is your display seven segment display okay so this seven segment display consists of the seven segments here you can see here these are the segments that are present in a seven segment display so these are named as a b c d like that okay so a seven segment display is an indicating device there will be seven segments and a dot okay so <clears throat> i can display alphabets as well as some numeric characters on this seven segment display okay so in this seven segment display okay there are two types one is called as common anode seven segment display and the other one is called as common cathode seven segment display okay this upper diagram that is shown here it indicates the common anode seven segment display each of these segments in a seven segment display is an led okay it is an led so to turn it <coughs> to turn it on you have to forward bias this so in a common anode seven segment display all the anodes are connected together to the positive supply Okay, built-in, so they will be connected to a positive supply. 
so the cathodes are left open so which are the segment you want to turn on in common anode seven segment display okay you have to give a logic low here so that that particular segment gets forward biased and it starts glowing okay so for example here if i want to glow segment a this segment a in a common anode seven segment display since the anode is already connected to vcc what i have to do here to glow this segment a i have to give here logic zero okay so then this segment a starts glowing so similarly to glow this segment b i have to give logic zero here so that means practically i should forward bias this segment b that is this diode b i have to forward bias then it will start glowing so in this way whichever the segment you want to glow in a common anode seven segment display that particular segment you have to give the input as zero for this segment inputs here so that they get forward bias they start glowing similarly a seven segment display can be a common cathode seven segment display so you can see the difference here this is common anode all the anodes are connected together to ecc here all the cathodes of the segments are connected to ground in case of common cathode seven segment display here see here the cathodes are all tied together they are connected to the ground here so all the anodes are left open here so if it is a common cathode seven segment display and suppose i want to <coughs> glow segment turn on segment b and c so i have to, I have to forward bias these two so for forward biasing the diode we know that i have to connect this anode to the high voltage so i have to give here 5 volts so i have to give here 5 volts then these two segments will start glowing so one the digit one gets displayed on the seven segment display so whichever the segment you want to glow in a common cathode seven segment display you have to give logic one here and the segments that you want to be turned off you should give logic zero here so that the diode particular that diode will be turned off it will not glow so in this way we can use this seven segment display for indicating alphabets as well as numeric characters alpha numeric characters okay this is one of the display devices that can be used in an embedded system for example you might have seen in fridges or refrigerators or in microwave ovens for indicating the temperatures in your refrigerator in your air conditioners so these seven segment displays are used okay so that the user can come to know what is the current temperature that he has set in the air conditioner so like this for indicating various alpha number characters we can use this seven segment display and the next one is the optocoupler okay so it can be used either at the input side or at the output side of the your embedded system processor okay so here this optocoupler is mainly used for providing isolation between the input and the output circuit okay so for example a example circuit is shown here you can see here so here this side my microcontroller is there okay so and here there is a input circuit so what i basically want here in this circuit so whenever i press the button here this button is pressed okay then i want this circuit my microcontroller to receive the input so when the button is not pressed when this button is off okay so this led will be off and this led is off no light falls on the base of this photo transistor so this will be off when this is off so at yeah, this pin of my microcontroller receives voltage vcc that is 5 volts so whenever this button is off the microcontroller is receiving 5 volts high value as the input so whenever i press the button here okay so the current starts flowing here through this led okay so this led glows here okay so this light falls on the base of this trans photo transistor this transistor is turned on so current starts flowing through this transistor to the ground so now this microcontroller pin is actually connected to the ground okay so the microcontroller is going to receive the value as zero logic zero when this button is pressed so in this way the whatever the logic that is pressed by the user here that will be received by the microcontroller but the basic difference between this and the normal circuit connection is here there is no physical connection between this input circuit and the microcontroller okay so if there is any high voltage occurs here in the input circuit nothing will be happening nothing will happen to your microcontroller it will, it will be safe because there is a physical isolation between the circuit here as you can see here so this optocoupler is mainly used for providing the physical isolation between the circuits okay so this optocoupler mainly consists of a diode okay photo diode and a photo transistor okay or these two together will be packaged in a single ic okay so like this you can use an optocoupler for 
safe operation of your circuits. Okay. So the main function of this software coupler is to provide physical isolation between the circuits. Either you can use this software coupler at the input side of your microcontroller or you can use it at the output side of the microcontroller also. So this is <coughs> one of the sensors and actuators that can be used in your embedded system. The next one is we can use the relay. Okay. So relay is one of the important electromechanical device that can be used in an embedded system. Okay. So let us see how the relay works here. So you also saw here, <coughs> this relay can be used for providing isolation between a low voltage circuit and a high voltage circuit. Okay. So the relay is a electromechanical device. Okay. We can use it in various embedded systems. So the next kind of the sensors we can use it in embed system is a push button. Okay, as you can see here, one of the push button is shown here. Okay, so between this lead and this lead, the circuit will be connected here. Between this this lead and this lead, a circuit will be connected. So this is a normally open push button. So whenever I press the push button here, 
the contact is established between this point and this point and the circuit gets energized okay so this is a normally open push button okay similarly there is one more kind of push button that is called as normally closed push button so if i connect any circuit between this point and this point here suppose my circuit is here if i connect my circuit here the circuit will be initially on okay because there is a connection already established between this point and this point so this is called as a normally closed push button the push button is has established the contact without any input being given so the circuit will be turned on so if i want to stop the stop the working of the circuit i have to just push this push button so this will move downwards the connection will be broken between this point and this point and the current starts flowing in this circuit so either you can use a normally open push button or you can use a normally closed push button for various operations in your embedded system okay <clears throat> the next one is very important actuator which can be used in an embedded system is your stepper motor a stepper motor is an electromechanical device which converts the input electrical signals into mechanical movement rotary motion okay so this stepper motor slightly differs from dc motor so in a dc motor as you know if i give a dc voltage okay the motor rotates continuously but whereas in case of stepper motor when i give a set of input sequence to the stepper motor the stepper motor <coughs> will rotate by certain step angle then it will stop so when i give the next next sequence of the input to the stepper motor the motor again rotates by certain angle then it stops so in this way the stepper motor will always rotate in discrete steps as against the continuous movement in case of your dc motor okay so let us see the working of your stepper motor now that we have seen some of the types of stepper motors available let's take a look at sub variations of both the permanent magnet and hybrid motor types these two subcategories are determined by how the leads from each phase winding is brought outside of the motor. The first example is a bipolar configuration. Here you can see that each winding lead is brought out separately. This type of winding, depending on the voltage applied and to which lead, can produce current flow in two directions. This allows each stator pole to be magnetized to either north or south. The unipolar configuration, on the other hand, only allows current flow in half of the winding at one time. Notice that each winding has a center tap that is brought outside of the motor along with each winding lead. Let's take a closer look at how the unipolar type of motor works. The center tap lead is connected to a positive voltage source in this example. Driving one of the leads on winding A to ground allows current to flow in one half of the winding, generating a polarity on the stator poles and the rotor rotates accordingly. Next, the grounding source is removed from the winding A lead and one of the winding B leads is driven to ground. Again, current flows in half the winding and the appropriate stator poles are energized. This continues to rotate the motor 360 degrees. On the other hand, bipolar motors allow current flow in both directions through each winding. Applying a voltage to lead A prime and grounding lead A generates current flow resulting in the stator polarity shown above. Removing the voltage from winding A and applying a positive voltage to lead B prime on winding B while driving lead B to ground generates current flow and stator polarities as shown above. This continues to rotate the rotor 360 degrees. Let's compare both winding configurations. Unipolar motors only allow current flow in half the winding, while bipolar offers bidirectional current flow. Since torque is related to winding current, bipolar motors will generate greater torque than unipolar motors. Furthermore, Due to the fact that unipolar windings are thinner than bipolar motor windings, more wire is needed, thereby increasing the winding's resistance. This could cause increased power loss via the winding potentially raising the temperature considerably. However, 
Using a bipolar motor will require more complex circuitry, potentially increasing the cost of your design and use up more of your board's real estate. One other point to make here. Since unipolar motors do have both ends of the windings being brought out of the motor, we could connect them in a bipolar configuration by simply omitting the center tap lead. Now that we've So, as we have seen, it's the stepper motor is an electromechanical device. So, whenever I give the input current to the stepper motor or input sequence to the stepper motor, it starts rotating in rotation equal to the degrees. Okay? So, discrete steps. So, there are two types of stepper motors. One is called as bipolar stepper motor. Other one is unipolar stepper motor. What is a bipolar stepper motor? In bipolar stepper motor, it is a two phase. This is one phase, this is one phase. So each phase will have two leads coming out. So this is one lead and this is one lead. So this is one lead, this is one lead for this phase. And for this phase, this is the one lead and this is the one lead. So two leads are brought out for each phase. So it is called as a two phase bipolar stepper motor. In case of unipolar stepper motor, 
this is one face and this is one face there is a center tap here okay so there will be three leads for each phase so such kind of stepper motors they are called as unipolar stepper motors so how the current flows in each of these stepper motors in case of your bipolar stepper motor so the current may either flow through this coil okay like this or the current will flow through this coil in this manner okay once you have to energize this coil then you have to energize this coil so that the motor can rotate continuously okay non direction so in this unipolar stepper motor the current will flow through only half of the coil here so in bipolar stepper motor the current flows through this full coil okay from here to here but since there is a common point here okay so in case of unipolar stepper motor the current will either flow like this or it will flow like this only through the half of the winding so in this phase the current will either flow through this half of this coil or through half of this coil okay so that is the basic difference between a unipolar stepper motor and a bipolar stepper motor okay so for this let us see what is the sequence step sequence we can use it for in unipolar stepper motor okay so this is called as a full step sequence okay so these are the a b c d coils a b c d coils so in this full step sequence the motor for every given one this sequence a b c d sequence so two of the coils should be energized one in one phase okay and the other one other coil is energized in other half of the coil is energized in the other phase so for every step two coils two half of the coils will be energized in each phase so to rotate the motor in the clockwise direction we should go on applying first this sequence then this sequence like this we have to apply these sequences continuously for reversing the direction of the rotation you should apply this sequence in the reverse order so first you have to apply apply this fourth sequence then apply the third sequence then apply the second sequence then apply the first sequence so like this the direction of the rotation of the motor can be changed by changing the sequence in which the step sequence is applied to the stepper motor so this is called as full step sequence where each half of the coil in one phase will be energized so as you can see in the table this is the one half of the coil energized in one phase and there is one more coil half of the coil energized in another phase okay so at a given point of time in any sequence two half of the coils will be energized in a full step sequence there is one more type of sequence that can be used in a unipolar stepper motor that is called as wave step in this wave step only one half of the sequence of the any particular phase coil will be energized so here in the first sequence only this coil is energized and all other remaining coils they are not energized so in the second sequence only this coil 2 is energized and the remaining coils are turned off so in this way the this is the wave step sequence for rotating the stepper motor okay as you can see here the motor is rotating for each of the sequence that is given to the stepper motor okay now there is one more type of sequence that can be applied to the stepper motor that is called as half step sequence okay in the earlier these sequences that we have seen the wave step or the full step sequence for every sequence that is given to the stepper motor the stepper motor will rotate by one step angle for example if the step angle is 5 degrees for every sequence that is given to the stepper motor it will rotate by 5 degrees suppose i want to rotate the motor by half of the step step angle for example if the step angle of the stepper motor is 5 degrees and if i want to rotate it by only 2.5 degrees then we i have to use the combination of the earlier two sequences wave step and full step so as you can see here i'll have eight combinations okay so first in the first step two coils will be energized a and d then in the next step only a is energized d is d energized so in the third sequence a and b are energized in the fourth sequence only b is energized so this is this step sequence is the combination of the earlier two that is full step sequence and wave step sequence so by using this step sequence i can make the stepper motor to rotate at half of the its prescribed rotation angle for example if the step angle is 5 degrees for every step here the stepper motor will rotate by 2.5 degrees okay so for rotating the motor in the clockwise direction you have to apply this sequence in this direction okay so then for reversing the direction of the motor we can we have to apply this sequence in this manner 
okay so in this manner if i apply the sequence the stepper motor will rotate in the opposite direction so these are some of the different sensors and actuators that can be used in any embedded system okay thank you